I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Holes podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. What's up, bird? Hey. Hello. Feeling? I love pre-ed show like I, 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 <laughs> that moment you before i'm like get like i love watching your face go uh I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, gotta do this showtime <laughs> <laughs> I, I was it. thinking about playing with like a little like a uh, radio like hey everybody welcome back to the working glasses podcast <laughs> with my co-host <laughs> <laughs> i love it it's my Just, favorite oh real quick shout out to jason uh solomon for coming in and dude great great guy. dude great, great dude great show great guy thank you yeah. my friend that was great a lot of fun um here's what i got going on i'm now debating whether or not i should just start fucking doing jokes after that conversation with jason on on tiktok oh dude it's well just, what's so it, funny it, because i just put something up today on tiktok and i'm like fuck it let me just get back on this because i, I used it a little bit on it. but it's not that much different we got to talk about it off here because yeah. I, I hate it. And I don't know why I hate it. I mean, it's just, I mean, a, just the work. It's just I'm another just, thing I'm, you have to I'm do. I'm working already so but much. But you do threads. You do Twitter. See, I don't do those. Oh, so yeah, for yeah, me, yeah. and also I'm a video editor. So like. It makes more sense. Video it kind tracks. of like, you know, I don't know. Do people know that? That I, I had like, I used to, I have, we talk about all these shitty jobs that I've had. And then I ended up getting a good job. What do you so, mean? Well, like I got, I went to well, like. I mean, people know you're an editor now, but. Do they? We we talked about well, that on the said show. It a number of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're listening, yeah. I mean, I would assume they know what you're so doing. So, like, from like, uh, should we do it like a little recap? Because it's funny. I don't think you've ever gotten this full like. So I had all. I was a crackhead, drug addict. I had all these crazy jobs. Yeah. And then I land. You just glossed over like the best part of your whole story. So go into detail. What do you mean you're? A, so if you're gonna do a full recap. You might as well give the audience. Well, I was going to talk about then I got a good job. Like okay. I got a like a okay. non-working okay. class job. All right, go ahead. So Sorry. I like lucked into this, you know, it took me 10 years to finish college. <laughs> 10 short years. <laughs> to, get a, to get a bachelor's of science. <laughs> At year five or six where you like, man, what, what, well, I, I might not make it. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, we were talking about it last week with uh, Jason, how I was an engineering student for eight semesters. <laughs> eight semesters, and then I failed out. Yeah. Uh, and I go back to school. I go to film school. Oh, Penn State, right? I was at Penn State. Then I went back to film school. Went to back to school as, as like a film school. And that was like where I was like, oh, dude, this is cool. Just fucking with shit. Mm -hmm. Sound was a lot of fun for me. Editing was a lot of fun. I was a shit cameraman. Uh, writing was good. I was. I had some good scripts that I wrote. But then, so I moved to New York, and uh, you know, I'm full blown. Like, I remember driving to New York with my dog and all my shit in a station wagon going, man, I'm so glad to get all that cocaine behind me. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that so you whole, didn't do any rehab. The whole life. It was just Philly making yeah, me like that. Yeah, just, just South Philly is just fucking me up. Wow. I'm driving to New York, and I remember it like clear as day just having that like, man, it's going to be a fresh start. Let me ask you this before you keep going. Isn't it fun? Because we're both addicts. Isn't it weird how many barriers your attic brain throws up to block you from the real issue like i remember saying to myself stuff like that sometimes like man it's the city like it never really was me i was never accountable for decision making oh right it was like i'm just a product of my environment <laughs> like departed <laughs> i'm a product of my environment <laughs> my favorite line in that whole movie we always say it's like when fucking alec paul goes i ain't a world these bartenders too it's <laughs> a marky mark quits yeah <laughs> No, but uh, yes, it is amazing how you're how you're so blind to like just the fact that it's here mm -hmm. and it's oh you know but you never I mean most people live with blinders oh, on oh no you know yeah, what yeah, I mean yeah, yeah, they yeah. just don't have a debilitating fucking addiction no kidding right no they get to skate through life thinking it's all been bad luck. Or it's just all been life, you know? Yeah, I mean, some people get perspective. I guess as you get older, you start to gain perspective. But as a 20-year-old, no. I mean, I've never... So you're driving into the city thinking, uh, this I'm going to be clean as a uh, whistle. This is going to be great. No, just not, just be not, a, not be a... Not be a fuck-up. Not be a fuck-up. Yeah. yeah, not be a fuck-up anymore. I'm here under 48 hours. I'm in a bar. Yeah, I'm in a bar called Cokie's. <laughs> in old, what part of town? Old Williamsburg. <laughs> Like 2001 Williamsburg, like it was. And you were definitely living up to the name of the Oh, place. bro, they you could buy it 
it was crazy. Cokie McGowan, they called him. Cokie's, he was an ex-cop. His name was, his nickname was Cokie. Yeah. And he, I don't know, he left the force. I don't know, honorably, <laughs> dishonorably. I don't know the whole story. Cokie, if you're out there, shout out. Feel free, you have an open door to <laughs> so, tell your side of the story, It was Cokie. a fabulous bar. Uh, it was not, but <laughs> for you at the time, yeah, it, was it was home. Fa- it was fantastic. You could buy it and then do it. In they had the like bar. a little room. They were with a curtain. The Coke room. Yeah, a little Coke. <laughs> Cokey's <laughs> room, they called it. <laughs> it was the Coke closet. <laughs> what a great bar. I know a lot of guys that would pretty much love to live at Cokey's, the bar. <laughs> there was a lot with of the guys. Coke closet. That fucking live there. I'll tell you that, dude. <laughs> One of those places like, why are these guys here at 8 a.m.? He's trying to get to the train for work. You're running into a you. Uh, <laughs> then you have your little nap, your little messenger bag. You're on your way to your job. <laughs> From Cokies. <laughs> bringing it, dropping in with a lunch. <laughs> Coke room to your job. <laughs> I got a pastrami sandwich. I'm like, hey, look, hold on. I got to visit the cloak room real quick. <laughs> so, but yeah, so hit that. And then. So within 48 hours, you're already. Yep, you're already and got I run, half your paycheck up your nose. And I. I didn't even have a paycheck. I moved up here with like so a little bit of money. Spec? I didn't even have a job yet. Yeah, I had like a little bit of money in my in my. How'd you, you know, get the drugs? Just Favors? bought them. Yeah, no, oh, I had, you had enough to I score had a little enough. bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I was waiting tables, so I had cash. Oh, I didn't. When I, I thought, moved up, I thought you. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I moved up, okay. so I'm I'm here like 48 got hours. I got, got a it. new apartment. I'm living in New York City. I'm living in Brooklyn, and. uh and then, um, you know, I have this like, ah, this new me. And, you know, immediately right back to old tricks. Uh, yeah. I run into this dude and we're just we're just hanging, drinking, doing shots. You know, a new friend. And he's an assistant editor. I'm like, dude, I just moved up here to be an editor. And I just lucked into this. Damn. Dude, I got. So you wanted to get high and drunk. Got you the gig. Cut pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't get the gig immediately, but he brought but me into his him, office. Yeah. Uh, opened some doors, you know, with his things. She was like, "We're not hiring here, but why don't you apply to these places?" She totally took me in, like without him. I mean, Wes, shout out to Wes Waldron. Hell bro. yeah, dude! My, my boy, turned your life around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, t- changed it, uh, turned it around. I mean, it, it, it didn't, it didn't turn around until years later. But <laughs> but you're doing the thing. I was doing a thing. I got because the thing. of the connections you made then. But that's the whole thing. Like I've always kind of had a little bit of that charm. Yeah, oh, I mean, you got that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, you, can, you can kind of talk yourself in. in yeah, yeah. You get me in a room. Kind of sure, thing. yeah. And I, you know, I got the uh, interview like six months later, and uh, you know, I show up hungover with a ski cap on, sweating, and like whatever reason, they were like, "Hey, we like this kid." <laughs> you know what I mean? I think yeah. one of the other mailroom guys was like, "I like that guy with the hat." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that was that was the extent of it. Because uh, so, you know what, you are your gift is you could be a good hang, and back then. At you were a really good hang until you weren't. You know until what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. like before that time, yeah. people probably loved being around oh, you. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. the minute you weren't, it was like, who? What just happened? You got to get rid of this. Yeah, yeah. this is crazy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. So that's what it was like with that job. And then, um, you know, everybody pretty pretty early on, everybody was like, oh, this guy goes dark. You know what really? I mean? Like, like what this kind guy- of shit were you pulling? I'm trying to think of like it chronologically. What was the first? Like, or was it instance? a lot of little things that led up to one well, big thing? I mean, I was there a week and I was late three times that oh first week. You know what I mean? Like, just and you just, were so high, just still up. Oh, uh, just still. So up. like, really going there from Cokies? Yeah, yeah, straight up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Cokies was uh, more of a two a.m. kind of place. <laughs> they were like a legit. What was the five a.m. place? Uh, the five a.m. Um, place was uh, in Flushing on Flushing Ave. Over by a hospital, I've driven past it. You, there was no door out. There was no sign out front. It was just a door uh, that you would that you knew had to know to knock, and you would open up. And uh, oh man, that was they loved me. All oh, Puerto oh, Ricans. Yeah. All it was all Puerto Rican. Uh, some black dudes, but like mostly Puerto Ricans. I was like the only white dude that hung out there. And the guy that sold drugs was always like, "Yo, this boy's crazy. Yeah. This boy, this boy is like he's introduced to me. He's like, no, 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 no. He's all right. He's all right. This boy's like on like LSD or some shit, dude. He's fucking nuts." <laughs> <laughs> I uh, had an addict buddy of mine who would talk about that before work hang. Where it would start is like one, I'll have a couple of scotches after work, and I'll go right to bed. And he had a job, like as a, he was a fucking butcher, and he had a job um, that a friend gave him, like a friend of the neighborhood, kind of Italian. Thing. Oh, okay. Uh huh. And he is on thin ice, and he talks about how 
he was told like, hey, you're an embarrassment in the neighborhood. You know, when an Italian neighborhood oh, guy tells you that. Oh, yeah. The neighborhood yeah. guy tells you that, you yeah, know, like you're yeah, on yeah. your way out kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And this guy's like, I can't let you work there anymore if you're going to be late again. And he's like, fuck, I went home. I said, I'm just going to have one drink, you know, take the edge off. It's 11 p.m. I'm thinking, eh, it's, I got to get up at five. It's still six hours. I get up by midnight at six hours. I'm not gonna fall asleep if exactly. I try and th- yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, dude! Yeah. I already hear. Yeah, right. the, I, get, I already then, hear the dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, four I, I, I get on by two. It's two. I'll, and, be, I'll be fine. Two hours is up. I could. I, I, I could be, work. I've done it on two hours a yeah. lot. I'm better and on two hours. You know, it's yeah. six a.m. and he's asleep at his house. Yeah. And he, they're blowing his phone up. Oh yeah. And he's trying to feed. He goes and gets a fake doctor's note uh, to yeah, try yeah. to figure out like, but it was too late. Yeah, you yeah. know. And I, I, I love that story because. You know, so what happened to him though? But like so, fired. but the Italian, like the neighborhood guys, did well, they fuck him up? No, because he's he's he's, he's juiced in. Oh, okay. So he wasn't gonna get. They weren't gonna do him dirty. Oh, they but, were just like you can't but, work. You know, when your family, the embarrassment yeah. is them saying, "Yeah, you no longer will I give you a favor." Yeah, that in some instances that's worse than being killed. That's like, yeah. you're no longer trustworthy, and we just can't kill you. Kind and, of thing. And if something goes wrong. You're like a fucking suspect. Oh yeah, if something's this is, not this right, this guy a fucking rat now. now, now like you're, you're just untrusted. Yes, you're yeah, not yeah, trusted, yeah. which is the worst thing in the neighborhood to be is untrusted. I mean, yeah, yeah, we yeah. know that. Yeah. So, uh, I love those stories because it, it, we talk about this before with addiction, especially if you're ever in meetings or anything. This is me speaking personally. You got to find your story, right? And stuff like that, I've always gravitated towards because I know what that feels like to have all this responsibility. And a job that is a job, you're not one of these jobs where you show up and you clock in, you know, you're sitting around for a while and bullshitting. He's a butcher. Yeah. You know, I've had yeah, jobs yeah. like that where yeah. like the minute you walk through the door, it's 24 yeah. seven. Let's go. And if you're yeah. hung over, it's, it's the worst day of your life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but that part where you're like, just lying to yourself. Oh. I'll have one more. Oh, yeah, One yeah, more. Yeah. You know, midnight. Like, I've been there so many times drinking. I've been out. It's like, I have one more. Fuck, fuck. 4 a.m. Fucking 4 a.m. is nothing. Well, it's like once you step outside the door, once that door, once you grab that doorknob, that fucking night is already fucking dictated. Like, it's going to yeah. go. And the it's thing gonna is, it's going to go until the sun comes up. In those bars, yeah. I'm around dudes that got to go to work the next day, too. So it's not like right. we're all not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the majority of us in that bar, you yeah. know, those bars you're talking about, yeah, yeah. got to go to a job the next yeah. day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, wow, look how responsible you are leaving at 2 a.m. Like those guys are always like, oh, I really cares about his job. You know what I always, always fascinated me was those guys that are surrounded by alcoholics and drug addicts that are just sitting there sipping a Miller High Life. Yeah, they just love being around. Yeah, they can just, you know, like they've had like four beers yeah. in the last six hours. And you know what I mean? They're right just in the mix talking right with all the it. druggies and like all the Like it's not drunks. even, they're not even like, uh, like they're one of them kind of thing. It's so wild to yeah. me. Those guys that, that do that, that... Uh, I was like that because I didn't drink till I was 26, so I was, because my family very much are drinkers, I was yeah. very comfortable around... Addicts. Just hanging out. Yeah. I could be in a bar for hours mm-hmm. and sit there like it's so much fun because right. that's who I hang with or yeah. addicts, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm at a bar for more than an hour. I'm like, whoa, what shots? You know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, I'm, I'm moving, I'm, yeah. I'm escalating. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you it's, feel like that still? Or not really now? Comedy's a hard thing. I'm, cause I'm on the. What do you mean, the hang? When you do hang I at bars, you? you don't feel that anymore, right? The shot thing. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I haven't done a shot. Well, I know that. I know, but, but what's the feeling? Do you ever get the urge? You don't oh, jones for it anymore, or do you? No, I don't jones for it anymore. Okay. Um, the, it's the, uh, do I tire of this it, surroundings mm-hmm. is more of what happens, yeah. right? And I guess it's probably like a similar thing as like, you're just, you're there's a there's like a lull. There's like the a millisecond lull. Mm-hmm. You're like, shots. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah. I gotta feel this. I can't, I can't hear my own thoughts. I need to black this out, right? You know what I mean? It's just the minute there's a lull, you're like, shots, let's go. <laughs> I haven't, I've really cut back a lot on drinking and it's been super interesting. You know, we were hanging out at a place where, you know, we, where you and I hang out a lot in our past and I'm looking at some of the same people who I've in my past have been really drunk with and watching them continue to drink in the same way. And, you know, noticing one of our friends, I'm not going to say the name, but like watching him drink, I was kind of talking to him going, how did I ever fucking talk to this guy? <laughs> 
fuck was I doing talking to this guy? Dude, my fucking phone book's already getting smaller. I'm not even like, fully off the sauce yet. I have like it's already 15 eliminating names. dudes out of my phone. Dude, 15 names just ran through my head. I almost had four of them. <laughs> I know, I'm trying to be so, like, my diplomacy's on level 10 right now because I want to just start saying this guy's name. And then I was just like, oh, this whole thing is funny if I say his name. I, <laughs> I went through like three levels of fucking bits. There's uh, just so many people now that... I remember having these really long talks with when I was drinking heavy and now I'm in this like short time frame where I've really readjusted my alcohol intake. I'm going, why would I, what was I thinking? Yeah, that happens. I mean, that happens. Did that happen to you a lot in the beginning? Like, did you try to still go to circles of people when you were well in the height of your clean days? Here's what happened to me. I, you know, I got, I got sober like before I was in comedy and stuff like that. And like, I, I was like, it's weird because the job part actually plays into this, right? So, like, I had to jump back for a second and we'll come to this. So, like, I had this, like, I was at, I was working at a place. I was working on Super Bowl commercials. I was working on Saturday Night Live parody commercials. Like, I was like, you were killing it. I was a second assistant. You know, I was like just running tapes up and down Sixth Avenue. You were in the middle. But I was right there, dude. Like, Jimmy Fallon would come in and, like, you know what I mean? Maya Rudolph would come into the the edit. The height of the fame. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Bill Murray was in the elevator at one time. You know what I mean? It's just like, wow, this is fucking cool, man. And, um, you know, and I'm just sweating out cocaine. That's another thing we have to revisit on this show are some of the times that you've accosted celebrities high. It's some of the greatest Ed McGowan stories. Have I not told that joke? Uh, yeah? You've Have never told any of those stories on the air. Oh. So let's pick one if you want to tell it now. Since you brought up Fallon, I don't know well, if you, the, could, you probably can't tell that story, right? I'll tell it. I don't care. But I, I'll tell the uh, the Jack Black one's funny. Oh, that is funny. The yeah, tell, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell the Jack so, Black one. So this is that job. I'm working at that job, and we're working on. We would cut. The, I was actually thinking about this the other day. I forgot dude, to tell you. Fantastic. Yesterday, in fact. It was fantastic. Uh, I, I to this day, it was so great. Uh, so I'm a second assistant. You know, I just I, I'm like mailroom guy, but like the way the SNL stuff would go is like. And know, this the, is year 2003. Okay. So height, Jack, like Jack Black's popping. So. Right. So, but it, to, to the job itself. So the job is I'm in the mailroom, but Saturday Night Live is right down a block from the post house and they would cut the fake commercials, the parody spots, yeah. right? Which I don't, I don't know if they still do. But uh, anyway, it was a grind. It, you, they shoot it Friday afternoon. You work straight through. You just, you're there till Saturday night till it airs. Um, and uh, so I did that for like a season. First season I was there. I did it for a season. Then the next season, the uh, season premiere, Jack Black is hosting. He's um, Shallow Hal is coming out. So oh, he's, he's, promo- he's, he's promoting, promoting that. Okay. And uh, I say to the producer, I go, you know, sometimes the writer, the, the editor goes, the assistant editor goes to the show. I'm like, hey, man. Oh, I'm you were ne- a huge Tenacious D guy, right? Huge okay. Tenacious D. Huge Tenacious D fan. And uh, Jack Black, I just loved him. Lo- I just loved him. Everything about him. And uh, I go to the producer. I go, come on, man. I've never asked to go to a show. Get me... Can I go to Let me just go to this one He goes And you're wild ass And he goes Yeah He goes Dude it's a season premiere It's like the hardest one It's the hardest one To get seats to He goes I'll tell you what I'll put you in the writer's room I can You can sit in the writer's room I'm 28 29 And um, Who's in there with you In the writer's room Tina Fey I saw Tina Fey dude Man I My heart Dude I just fluttered right now (laughs) As I said that, dude. Isn't it mo- funny how hot she is? And you know what? It's the same reason why women probably find funny guys hot. Oh. She, I mean, she's not an ugly person. She's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she definitely is by no means this traditionally beautiful woman. I mean, right. she pokes fun at all that. It, yeah, yeah. But she is fucking oh, sexy. Man, just everything about her. She's just her. She so is. great. Yeah. Uh, she walks in. It was funny because I was sitting in there and we had taken me and the other. I was able to go with this other like second assistant dude. We took, um, he had like Benzedrine. Which is like speed pills. Okay. So we Benzos? took. Yeah. So I think I think that's what they're called. Yeah. So we took these speed pills, these diet pills, I guess, or whatever. And for uh, what reason? What was what what? Because we didn't want to be outcome? doing cocaine. We didn't want to be doing drugs. So it, it would keep you sped up. We all up. just okay. kind of like we're just a little little little, yeah, a little like, tuned up. Yeah, 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 yeah. get a little zip. You know what I mean? A little zip. A couple beers. You know what I mean? It's like hey, it. You're hanging that was always the, the thing. Room. Is like oh, I gotta be around uh, adults. Yeah, that let was me, your thing, right? Let me get a little like uh, let instead me of a button up shirt. Let me just yeah. do a benzo. Yeah, it's like it's like a nice scotch. You know what I mean? No, you know what? I gotta actually let's do diet pills this evening, gentlemen. 
It's like you're, it's like you show you showing you some I'm wearing watches. I'm my cummerbund, so let's do these diet pills. I'm like in front of her, like a like instead of a tray of watches, I'm like, hmm, uh, ephedrine. Um. <laughs> like some old lady takes out her that uh, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday pill shit. Fancy occasions is a benzo. <laughs> So now we're kind of like, you know, we're, we're buzzing, we're zipping, we're hanging out. I don't know any of the writers. I don't know anything at that point. I'm like so outside of comedy. Yeah, you're not a comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a comedian. You're just, just Nothing. eating it up. Just hanging out. And um, it's like to be there. Saw some like famous people uh, walking around and then Tina Fey walks in and I was like, dude, it went like legit slow motion for really? me. Really? Like her. You and, crushed that hard dude, on her? Dude, so like, and she kind of just like. Did this oh, thing with her no. hair, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it went like like a L'Oreal like like fucking shampoo commercial. Dream Weaver, <laughs> I believe you can get me through the night. <laughs> it was one hundred percent, dude. It was like that, and she's just putting like notebooks into a bag, and I go, I go, hey, great show. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Ed. <laughs> Little boy, you on the inside. Little boy, yeah, you fucking nailed it. And she goes, "Oh, thanks." And just the sweetest. What if you end up uh, marrying her? Wouldn't that be hilarious? Cokehead, crackhead, Ed marries Tina Fey. I mean, it's unfathomable. I mean, it's so like that moment of you going. She's the head writer of SNL, and I'm just some fucking you. second assistant with like you know on benzos, <laughs> on benzos, with some other fucking loser. <laughs> It's not even. It can't even. I can't Are even. Are you in the janitorial? <laughs> oh no, no, I was like, oh. Well, I mean, in the old days, <laughs> in a formal life, I know, I know my way around in my bucket. I'll in tell you a that. Formal life, just the good half. <laughs> just the good half janitorial. <laughs> A fucking loser. Just all your scum comes dripping off her, like onto her. <laughs> because that's what, because I did linger. I lingered a little You're bit. You're a linger. Oh, uh, I lingered. And, and what'd uh, she do? She just, you know, hey, like, kind of, yeah, she, uh, buttoned uh, up. Exit. And, like, <laughs> for sure. Exit stage left, uh -huh. Tina Fey. So now we go to the after party. And you're watching the show on a monitor, right? Yeah, In you can't the, okay, see the yeah, stage. Okay. You're just watching the TV. Uh, but we go to the after party. And now uh, it's at this bar. You know, it's always like a secret location, but they just run out of bar. And we're like, you know, we are the lowest level of allowed, people allowed in. So we're like, yeah. we're I, coral. I had invited once to one of those Saturday Night <laughs> yeah, yeah. Live parties you, you where you're just, like, you just they let the, everybody in and they're like, uh, Yeah, you can stand okay. by the door over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of these areas, <laughs> but here, you can by yeah. the mop. Yeah, if you need something, wave <laughs> to one of us and we'll get you. Yeah, it was like that kind of thing. But um, and then I go to use the bathroom and I come back because now we've scored drugs, actual drugs, yeah. <laughs> and we're like doing, you know, I'm like, I'm now gonna go it's to like, the, now it's it's on, yeah. Well, tell you, it's part now. Yeah, yeah. I know how to handle. You hand said after party, so yeah. I know how to handle myself now. You know what I mean? I know what we're doing. Uh, and I'm stopped by the bar, and the other half of Tenacious D, Kyle Gas, is at the bar. As I'm like ordering a drink, I go, yo, Cage. Yo, dude. And I'm just so like. You're familiar. Oh, you're bro. tuned up. And I'm using like the like lingo from, from the, the album. So he knows. Like, all the like nicknames that everybody, you know what I mean? Like, it, and it was crazy too. And because he's beyond the fame point where that's charming. Kyle? Kyle's totally. So he was into it. Kyle's totally awesome. into it. Kyle was totally cool because actually outside of the bar, I guess a bunch of kids got wind of the after where the after party was and they were like they were out front signing guitars oh, awesome. and stuff like that yeah, yeah it was very I cool how big tenacious d they're like a band they, yeah they really are a band yeah absolutely yeah they were fucking huge so i'm now i'm just like bullshitting with uh cage for a little bit and i go i guess i go yeah my favorite. what's up with fucking jack this i go what's up with jb these days he goes <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> abbreviation familiarity <laughs> how you doing dog what part of the boot you from hon <laughs> fucking asshole <laughs> I go what's up with JB these days he goes what do you mean dude I'm like I don't know dude he's getting all skinny he's like Hollywood like what the fuck dude selling out he go, and he starts laughing now I'm just kind of riffing yeah now you're getting the juice we're, we're, now, we're, yeah. he's, and he's kind of leaning this into it this is pre comedy this oh, is your stage oh bro and fucking Kyle's he's digging it he goes oh dude he goes it's so funny let's go let's go find him and he takes me into the VIP section. All these moments we've you just had could have been career starters oh. for a lot of people. Oh, dude, you don't even know how many career starters. You don't even know. Like I was going, I sit awake at night now. Like you know, All after those times after you... doing a show for six people on a Saturday night, just laying there. Like how many opportunities did I have 
that I, I didn't even were, know were opportunities. You hit line drives <laughs> that you ruined, that oh. you tried to make into triples yeah. and just ruined them. Go ahead. So he brings me into the VIP section, uh, and, we're, and we're walking through. Everybody's there, the whole cast. Everybody, I see everybody. And he goes up to Jack Black. He goes, yo, what's up, dude? He goes, yeah, what's up? He goes, yo, th this dude wants to say something to you. <laughs> and he goes, and he goes, what's up, bro? I go, I go, yo, JB, what's going on? Whatever happened? What's up with you these days? He goes, what do you mean, man? I go, dude, what happened to the gut? <laughs> and I lift my shirt up, and I start slapping my belly. I go, what happened to the gut? And he goes, Oh, it's still here, baby. <laughs> it's still here. And he starts doing like this. And just as he do it, and I'm like, I'm like, this is why I love this guy. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like he yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, give it, yeah. gives it right back to me. And just as he's doing that, I get a tap on the shoulder. Two big black bouncers are like, sir, you're going to have to come with us. <laughs> <laughs> they just escort me out. Oh, it was fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, it was so cool. Uh, I once had a similar situation. I was selling used cars and... Um, my shirt was wrinkled because I didn't know how to iron it. And one of the guys who was jealous of me bought me an iron to show me up. So the same as you. You know, opportunity's been knocking everywhere for me, buddy. <laughs> you still got that a iron. Fucking <laughs> piece of shit. But I hope that guy, I hope that guy lost his wife and kids. Hope they let, I hope she left him. He's a, he's on my list, of my Billy Madison list. He's oh, on that dude. list. Yeah, but your list. I mean, Steve My Buscemi's list is too long. Yeah, Steve Buscemi had seven names on that list. <laughs> Yours is like a notebook. Mine's like keep... the Billboard Hot 100. <laughs> you keep it under your pillow. It's like, <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Just going over my notes. Hey, nothing, honey. It's going over some of my notes. It's my hundred person long list. <laughs> Sometimes I walk around going, what if I ran into that guy? About just different guys. Over my past, like I could, there's no like uh, between the years of 1995 and 2000. No, it's all they're all at access in my brain at any moment. Yeah, that's that's wild. Well, you know what it is. You kind of you've even said it on here. Like, oh yeah, you just they they the it's all the same guy. Oh yeah, the face just keeps it's changing. changing. Yeah, 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 that's exactly yeah, what it is. Yeah, uh, I don't think I've ever had any famous people encounters that were positive. I'm trying to think of one that was remotely positive and through work. None. Like positive like that or like Well, a, in comedy, I, I mean you've met some you've met some uh Yeah, but even that like that, some people that you've I've, never gotten like good advice from somebody or no, anything? No, 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 no. It's always been um I you know, and I I think that's a good thing to talk about on the show because I've heard this from my other shows at times. People are like, Hey, why are you always so disgruntled? Um and I'm just like, I, you know, I would love to have a pinpoint on that. And I think I finally figured out what that is. And it's really the, you could only go off of how you've been treated, right? Mm -hmm. And deservingly or not, I don't have a many, I don't have many instances where I'm like, well, oh, that was a really great interaction. Uh, like even with you, you got a little love out of that interaction with jack black and this oh. other guy there was a little love there oh absolutely. You got, that's yeah, yeah. a story yeah. yeah yeah he he enjoyed it and then uh yeah until i ran into him at the after after party he was yeah, like yeah, uh, oh, this I, fucking I thought, guy i thought you were an hour <laughs> ago <laughs> told me dodge, dodge this fucking guy i'm like yo you like ween i, I, love, oh, man. <laughs> I went up like, to him oh. start talking about ween and he's All like right. oh man i gotta get away from this kid <laughs> I love how you have the ability to Philly annoy a celebrity. Because at first he was like, oh, hey, man. And then I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, fuck, uh, I mean, dude. Now, now you're just, now you're, you're just you're useless. Yeah. All the charm has been worn off. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, I never had that before. Uh, I think Dom Herrera was pretty cool to me once. Dom yeah. Herrera had a good conversation yeah, with me once. we talking about that last week. But like, yeah. nothing like, um, my point is, I've been fans of things huge sports fan like san diego sports fan i i do have some comedians that i'm fans of but n i've never Bro, met anyone about like little fan. steven dude like you got you got like oh. dude you got like you got but stuff I, I, but I, wor we, I worked with uh them like marine and steven it's i worked work yeah thing, that's though. great but like i've never had a fan moment that was amazing that's a fan moment you had even because you weren't working in comedy yet right you were just an editor yeah, yeah, yeah. and right. you weren't like you didn't see it as like a a way to be in the mix. But here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. I I've, I've been so I, you know, I'm so pickled. I find all those moments like honestly, if Jack Black was telling this story, he would be like, "Oh man, this fucking and then I see the fucking kid again." You know what I mean? Like 
no, I no, have no, this you, perspective. I have this glowing remembrance. I'm taking of it. it for face value. You're a fan of a band, the one of the I, biggest band members. I mean, the the other band members like, dude, you got to meet the other guy. Right. He that's took amazing. Me, he took that me to the part VIP. alone is worth that happened. Yeah, yeah. He, that's Kyle real. was definitely into that's it. Real. Yeah, because he real. took me into the VIP. There's he no was other like, way. It's gonna I be funny to there. annoy yeah. Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little slight against him. Yeah. That'll be funny for me. Yeah, this it was it yeah. was great. You yeah, were yeah. you helped him annoy that guy. That's great. Totally. Yeah, that's an awesome story. The Jack Black part, you know, he did lift up his shirt and rub his belly and say, "It's still here." Awesome. So you know what I mean? It was. You can't ask anything more of two famous people and you're at an after party and you're like that's a killer story yeah yeah it was cool um but that was a that's a rare opportunity i mean there is that jimmy fallon uh dude are you kidding me you I re- well he used to hang out new yorkers know you, you know people that in the west village yeah. know that where he used to hang out I yeah mean, that was his and i would just happen to be in there and it was the same kind of thing where i didn't give a fuck and i was just kind of and riffing it's funny you don't give a fuck because that is your personality to an extent but overall, it's the juice you got yeah. in you. It, you got all that. I'm just like, you got hey. all the junk in you. I'm like, oh, dude, I'll just fucking rip on. I was like busting on it, ripping on his clothes. Yeah, you feel I was like, him. look you, at you. <laughs> I was like, what is this shirt? Come on. Don't you make money? Come on. It's just fucking busting his balls. And then, you know, we're like doing drugs again. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story so much because of the ending. <laughs> it's such a great ending. <laughs> Just, to, just it's so good. I, I mean, well, maybe one day you can actually tell the ending. But that shit was so good. I love it. Um, I was trying to think about if I got any work things, man. I, I don't. I here's the problem I'm having about thinking about work is that you know, I'm, I'm 42. We have this show. Uh, I know where I want my career to go, and I have all these. I wouldn't call them crossroads, but you know, they're they're healthy decisions. For my career I have to make but it there's some growing pains in front of me I could feel it because I'm doing some different things oh. to pursue the business now yeah, yeah, you know yeah, the dude. business this this is this is hard this is this a lot of shit it's dude. a lot of business stuff yeah, we're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm thinking about how neglected my business has been in the sense of comedy uh, because I doing the show has brought me to a place mentally where I'm thinking about all the stuff I do to make money and how I did not bring those skills into comedy because I didn't see comedy as money. Right. I saw I saw comedy as it it can only happen this way. Yeah, right. And that's why I've always figured out other ways to make money because right. I knew comedy needed to stay a certain way for me. I wanted it to be as pure as it could be mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i thought i was avoiding a lot of stuff by not giving into this the systems that are in place mm-hmm. to get you to the next stop and i thought maybe i would backdoor it and now you're like i'm really dealing with the business part and it's been really hard to think about work because you're like this is all work yeah right you uh, know this yeah. used to be fun and it still is fun but it's more work than fun currently yeah I mean, it's it's a lot of work, man. I, uh, I mean, I'm editing uh, so much stuff now uh, with the clips and everything like that. But uh, it's listen. Here's the thing. I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. I I'm love, really, it. love it. I love it. And I'm just like, ah, fuck it. I, you know. But it's thinking just... about my point is thinking about jobs in general now is really hard because <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm like, did I really like the work I'm doing now? But like, hey, it's work. Uh, and to think about more work that I didn't like. Is, well, I mean, that's taxing. That's kind of how this whole thing got started. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <We're> <laughs> like, is this, hard. is this really uh, is this really better than waiting tables? Right? Like, <laughs> we always come back to that. Dude, I, <laughs> so I have like my morning set out. Right. It's like, OK, I get up in the morning around 655, 645, 7. You know, depending upon the day, I get my kid up, right? I got to get him out, daycare. Usually, I'm lucky enough to get the, the wife does the take and I do the pickup. But the last couple days, some shit's, you know, some stuff come up for her. So I got to do the pickup and the drop off and it's been raining and I'm walking a mile and a half there and a mile and a half back and I'm, it's in the fucking rain. And, and then he had the stomach flu and I feel like the suburban asshole dick and i live in like new york City. henry hill at the end of goodfellas like a regular like, fucking schnook and I, I, yeah, 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 they gave me egg noodles and ketchup i feel like i just got egg noodles and ketchup 
I'm not complaining, but I know this is all kind of part of the yeah. the buffet of life. <laughs> Sometimes, like you know, you you know, you, I totally see you at that at that end shot with the robe. Just uh, well, he's just beat. Like that's how I feel lately. Is I'm so humbled. The point I'm trying to make is, at 42, I am so humbled by life. I'm the most humble I've ever been. Yeah, oh, that's good. It doesn't feel good. I think. I mean, I it is good. Don't get it's very good. It's good. But and I. But I definitely feel like Henry Hill at the end of Good. I, yeah, yeah. I feel well, like there's the, a certain catharsis in that, like in like humbling yourself. Like yes. it is, it is. You kind of you you get a broader perspective, stuff like that. Like I've been humbled. God damn, I've been humbled many times in my life, and uh, I've not always uh, embraced it. You know what I mean? But well, that's but the, that's then, the but, point I'm making. Yeah. But then embracing it is really where like you you find new things out about yourself. It's cool. That's what I think. Ignorance. Ignorance is bliss in the in the sh- the context of our show, with the jobs we talk about, and that's the connection the show has been helping me come to is that all these jobs we're talking about, going to work every day was was misery. Yeah, but there was this weird delusional sometimes, this I won't even call it optimism, but the delusion that this would not be forever. Like I was going to be this famous or this like successful oh, thing, right? Oh, I, so going to these jobs, it just felt like a fucking well, yeah. I'm here, whatever. I'll be gone in a week. Like just you know how Nino yeah. Brown is. Like, I'll be out in a week when they catch him <laughs> in New Jack City. I'll be out in a week. That's how I felt going into every job. Like it's temporary. Yeah. And then there was a time like it took me so long to realize that. If you don't put the work into the business part of the comedy, this is what it is. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that part is very humbling. But I wish I could have saw that stuff earlier on just because it's... Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stories like that. There's people that are very talented. You never felt that way in the editing gigs, but when you got clean because you started comedy so no, late... No, editing was... Uh, no, editing... Um, the, the whole thing about editing, and this is what I was getting to... Uh, I forgot to come back to yeah circle it. We were t- we were talking about like um, like when I got sober, the um, then it just became about the job, the job, the job, the job, the job, uh, money, 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 and in the editing and advertising, you there's a there's a lot of like, do I want to work with the guy? Yeah, he's good, but do I want to work with him? Do I? Does he hang out afterwards? It's like much with us, like do I want to go on the road? Like if yeah, exactly. I have a gig, yeah, guys. The hilarious. Is the guy a good 30 hang? minutes he fucking kills. He sets but is me he up a perfect. Good hang? I got to be with him for ass. 10 hours. Yeah, exactly. right. Yeah, yeah, right. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of like, um, uh, it's, it's got like a like a clout kind of like a thing. You know, are you in with the cool kids? Did that of? help you starting comedy in the business end of it or no? Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't good at it. Uh, to get to get to it, I wasn't good at it, and I felt very um, like I was like uh, kissing up. For the first time in my life, like I felt like I was just kind of like people Not pleasing. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was being myself. Um, and then I started making. I, made, I mean, does that fuck with your sobriety when you have an identity crisis like that? Yeah, because I started drinking again. Oh. I was sober for nine years, and I totally, um, <clears throat> I, I, I was hating myself. What the job was making you do that? Yeah, I got like I was not. I felt like soulless. You know what I mean? I felt like I was just like, I, I didn't, you know, I was, there was certain jobs, certain edits that commercials jobs that I worked on that I was like, oh, I feel very satisfied. This is very creatively satisfying. I feel like I brought a lot to the table, this and that. Other times I'm just like kissing ass and like, I'm just like with people I don't Cause you're building respect. your business, right? And, it's just and you're all like, this, like all, all this stuff. And I don't, I'm like, I don't, I don't like who I'm becoming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the money dropped out. I lost a big account, and then I was just like, "I did all that for I what? only did it for nothing." Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, I went to like back to making like fifty thousand dollars a year. Like I was just like, "Oh, dude, this is not great." Um, you know, my wife was out of work at the time. Like it was, uh, it was like I hit uh, like this thing, and then I just started drinking again. Did that make you feel better for a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. It made me uh, like Isn't I was that trying to crazy drinking really well does socially because I was like a social, social like I'm a, a social so, drinker. It was yeah, a social thing. And then, you know, I just ended up smoking crack. Again. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> always leads back <laughs> yeah, to right. the crack. <laughs> like, here we go. Uh, so then but then, I found, you know, comedy is really and, and that's I guess I get a little hard headed in like, I, I'm, like I'm not going to kiss somebody's ass. Like I, if I, I got to fucking kiss ass. 
I'll just go back to advertising. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, you know what I mean? I can just go make Be, real money. And maybe uh, that's like, like the brilliance of, you know, living a life that's hard, I guess, is you really know what your concessions are and what they aren't. Yeah, right. Like, I really do know because I've had to eat so much humble pie. Yeah. I really know what I can swallow and what I, I can't. I have right. a really good radar now. Like, yeah, yeah, right. The beating I can take and the beating yeah. I refuse to take. Yeah, I mean, I've, like, literally been punched in the face enough times that I know how many punches I could take to the face. Yeah, you know like, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's three? Uh, two more. I could probably do two know. more. This guy, I don't know about this guy. This guy looks like he's going to take two shots. <laughs> this guy's yeah, you size big. guys up. Like, <laughs> this guy's big. Right, this I guy don't know. He is more than... be a problem. <laughs> I better get this one quick. That's <laughs> uh, so good. That's too fucking good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was I thinking know. about, we were talking about jobs. Uh, we talked about two weeks ago, uh, incentives. and uh, Oh, yeah, incentives. Yeah, we never we never really, we kind of like at Listen the Listen to end. this incentive. Yeah. So I'm selling used cars. Uh-huh. Uh, the guy says to me who runs a lot, he's like, listen, I got, he laid out $600 in cash in front of me and the other salesman. 20s? Hundreds? Hundreds. Uh-huh. He just lays them out. He's like, I have $600 in cash as bonus. Each car you sell, I will give you a hundred bucks. So one of these hundreds or all of them could be yours. I just have a day, bro. I go out there and we have terrible, terrible stock, but I just end up getting four hungry people on the line and I'm, I'm sealing. Nice. I am clearing nice. cars. Nice. By the end of the day, it's a Saturday. Close down at 5 p.m. I got 600 bucks in my pocket in addition to the commission. And I'm thinking, fuck yeah, right? And my ex and I had been like on and off seeing each other. And I I knew I was going to take this money and stock it away to move to New York. I'd already oh. knew I was moving. Oh, shit. I'd already been here, oh. but I knew I had to save a bunch of money up. Yeah, right. So, I, you know, I, I, I needed at least two G's to move with. So I was uh -huh. saving it. So when he said uh, that, we were about five months away. When from he moving. showed you those six hundreds, it was a. You were like, yeah, "Fucking, yeah, 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 that's yeah. New York. That's, yeah, that, that's half the way to New York, exactly. right there." Oh, dude. So I had a, I had goal set. I right? just fucking went out and killed it. Yeah. So I I put the money. I get home. I put it in a drawer. I go into the comedy store and I'm doing my set. And I look in the back and it's my ex. And we haven't been together now probably about six or seven months, but we've been. You know, every now and again she comes by. Hook it up. And we hook up. Uh huh. Okay. But like, not in a dirty way. Yeah, we, like, just, yeah, uh, like, just we a, hang out, companionship. Yeah. But you know, it's so weird she's there. I come off stage and I go to the back and she's like, let me talk to you. And she says, uh, I'm pregnant. And I'm, I'm like, okay. Um, let's, you know, I, I love this person still, yeah. but I know I'm not staying. Yeah. There's no way we can do this. I'm not right. staying. Yeah. Uh, she's kind of she comes from a religious background, but uh -huh. is very progressive. Uh huh. So I don't know what she's gonna say. Right. 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 So I take her back with me to my house. We're sitting there. We're chatting. And finally, I just say like, "What do you want to do here?" Because you know, I know. Uh, I'm just telling you right now. Like my goals, which you which you know, which was a big reason why we couldn't make this work, is that I'm I'm leaving um, the next like six months. Um, she's like, "Yeah, I know that." And I think like probably best to terminate it i'm like okay uh so she goes and sees how much it is and she's not working at the time and it's six hundred. <laughs> dude it's been a life of that <laughs> and tell them where you're at uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Edmund Comedy. You can follow me on TikTok at Edmund Gallant Comedy. We have an email address. Send us your thoughts on your job. You got problems at your job. Yeah. We'll, we want to help you. We're not going to fix them, but <laughs> we will. We'll talk you we'll, through yeah, We'll give you some advice. It's probably going to be bad. Uh, email <laughs> us at uh, workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. Josh, what do you got? Uh, at Josh Ricardo, all socials, joshricardo.com for dates and all other things. And that's it. Yeah, we'll see you guys again next week. Later. Uh.
Oh, one last thing, guys. Yo, uh, big announcement. We've joined a brand new podcast network called Connected Podcasts. And I know you thought the working class holes were just about being disgruntled. We're not. We have a mission, making you laugh. Their mission, helping us drive this network to the top and be number one. Dude, we're, I know. We're so psyched. And you got to be sure to check out some of the other great shows because they have some truly great ones. And when I say truly, one of them's called Truly Darkly Creepily and the other one's called One Broke Actress. Just some of my favorites. Check it out. We'll see you guys again soon.